now that we've talked a little bit about what a singular value is, let's talk about how to find them. And we'll go into what we actually call the singular value decomposition, which is kind of using these singular values to factor a matrix in a form that we'll see by the end here. Let me just go ahead and say, I'm not going to talk about the theory of this. I'm going to talk more about the mechanics of how to go through this. And so the first step is we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A transpose A. I should also point out that in this video, I'm going to focus on an M by N matrix. It could be square or not. I guess I should say M greater than or equal to N there. <coughs> but it is just a little bit different if we have more columns than rows. We'll do that in the second video. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A transpose times A. What this is going to do is give us, in this case, an N by N matrix. Also, because of the way this works, and we've looked at this before, a transpose A is automatically going to be symmetric and positive definite, which are kind of important properties in terms of this whole thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Let's say my matrix A is 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 2. It's a simple matrix multiplication to figure out A transpose A. And that comes out to be the matrix 10, negative 6, negative 6, 10. At this point, it's just a 2 by 2 matrix, and we can just use the characteristic polynomial and find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in that standard way, which is what I'm going to do. But of course, in general, if this came out to be a larger matrix, we'd have to do a numerical method. We'd have to do a QR factorization uh, kind of thing, do an iterative method, perhaps, to figure out what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors were. Okay. So, in this case, we get the characteristic polynomial. We've got 10 minus lambda squared uh, minus 36, set that equal to 0, gives me lambda squared minus 20 lambda plus 64 equals 0, which factors nicely as lambda minus 16 times lambda minus 4 equals 0. What that gives us then is that my eigenvalues are 16 and 4. Now those eigenvalues though, even though I've written them as lambda, are really my singular values squared. So s1 squared is 16, s2 squared is 4. Okay. So, now that I've got that, now even though I've written them as s1 squared and s2 squared, so two things that are worth pointing out about that. One, this does mean that my singular value could either be 4 or negative 4. It could be either 2 or negative 2. Perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and take the positive ones. It really doesn't matter. You would work perfectly fine if we took the negative versions of the singular values. In terms of finding the eigenvectors, we're going to go ahead and just treat them as the 16 and the 4. We are going to use the actual eigenvalues of this matrix. And I won't go through that. So for this one, we get a v1 vector. Turns out to be 1, negative 1. And my v2 vector turns out to be 1, 1. Now those are kind of the nicest forms of these things. 
but it is worth noting that we do need to normalize these. We do have to take these down to unit eigenvalues, eigenvectors. But that's easy. Each of these things has magnitude 2, so this is going to be 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. This is going to go and be 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. To some extent, we've got half of it now, although really we've done more than half of the work involved in this. The next thing is we need to figure out what are the u's. Because again, going back to my general equation, my singular values and singular vectors are such that avi is equal to my singular values times my ui's. So what that means is my matrix A, my 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 2, times my v1, my 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, has to equal my singular value, 4, times my u1. But now this is really easy, because this is just a matrix multiplication. I get 0, 0, and 4 over root 2, which is uh, 2 root 2, and negative 2 root 2 equals 4 times. So I just divide by 4, and my u1 vector is 0, 0, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2. Same thing for the other one. When I take my 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 2, times my other v, my 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, this is going to be that singular value of 2 times some u vector. Do the matrix multiplication, divide by 2, and we get the vector u2 is, in this case, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0, 0. It's worth noting that these are automatically, if we've done this right, these are automatically orthogonal and unit vectors. The whole process of doing this, we don't need to normalize these again, unlike what we had to do with the v's. Now, to some extent, that's it, but we do tend to, as I said at the beginning, kind of write this as a factored form for A. So my matrix A is my U vectors put into a matrix. So we've got 0, 0, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0, 0. My S is a diagonal matrix of my singular values. So I've got the 4, 2, 0, 0. And then V transpose. So again, V would be my V vectors as the columns. So V transpose is going to have my V vectors as my rows. So V transpose would be 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. Now technically, 
what we just found is what we call the reduced singular value decomposition. And the reason it's reduced is that the U isn't a full basis for all of R4. The columns of U are only, well, there's only two of them. Whereas for a full basis, I would need four. The way we do this to do the full SVD is we take this matrix, the S, and instead of it being kind of a diagonal matrix, we make the S be the same size as the original matrix. A was a four by two. We put that up there and then we just fill it out with zeros. The V transpose is exactly the same because that did have my full orthonormal basis in there. And then this, the U, needs to be extended into a full basis. So my first two columns are going to be these. And then we just go ahead and we need to extend this out into a full orthonormal basis. To some extent, it doesn't matter what goes in here in terms of the multiplication though, because when I multiply this out, I'm being multiplied by these zeros down here. So it doesn't matter what I do here, I'm gonna get the same thing as I got for the product of the first two matrices here but it should be a full orthonormal basis. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is one over root two, one over root two, zero, 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 one over root two, one over root two, and there we go. If we multiply this whole thing out, we get our A, we've got a full orthonormal basis for U, we've got a full orthonormal basis for the V, and this thing times its singular value gives us the appropriate things in V.